Hi ladies, I get asked about AMH numbers all the time. So I thought I would do a quick video for you today telling you a little bit more about AMH and what it really means for your fertility. So let's get into it. Hi ladies, welcome back to Fertility Mom. Today we're talking all about AMH and what it really means for your fertility. So we're gonna dive right into that, but first, if you haven't already been to my live Fertility Masterclass, head down to the first pinned comment or the description box and make sure you're signed up for the very next one so that we can get on together and really talk about what's going on for you and what you can start doing that very day to help make a difference in your fertility. You also wanna make sure that you are subscribed here on this channel and on my email list so that you can get first dibs on this very special Black Friday offer that I have coming out that's all about helping you to figure out the exact right supplement regimen for you in your fertility journey. There's a million different supplements out there and many different ways to take them, doses, and I wanna make sure that you're taking the right thing for you and not accidentally taking something wrong that could actually be getting in the way of what you want to be doing. AMH, let's talk about this because this is something that comes up pretty much every single time I talk to anybody. They say, my AMH is this, my doctor said this, and it can really be a distressing number for many of you, and I'm betting that many of you watching this video may have been told you have low AMH. But first, let's start from the beginning. Let's talk about what AMH really is. So AMH stands for anti-malarian hormone, and it is the hormone that is released by follicles that are maturing or developing in your ovary. Now, at the beginning of every month, your ovary will start developing many, many follicles, and then pretty much around the middle of that follicular phase, your body, your ovary will choose the dominant follicle, and that will be the egg that is released during ovulation. So every single month, we get a new group of follicles that are kind of in a race to see who will be the dominant one and who will become the egg that is ovulated. So an AMH blood test is done to see how much of this anti-malarian hormone is being released by those developing follicles. Now a lower AMH number relates to a lower follicle count. Now a lot of people think that the AMH number that they have is an indication of how many eggs are left inside their ovaries total, and that's not the case. The AMH number is related to how many follicles are being matured in that very cycle. Now your egg reserve, meaning how many eggs are available for each cycle, does diminish over time as we age. Now remember, you are born with all of the eggs you'll ever have. We never make new or more eggs. So when we're younger, we start with more eggs, and when we have more eggs to spare, the ovaries will pull more out to develop during each cycle. But as we get older, the amount of eggs that the ovary will pull out each cycle will go less and less and less and less, which makes sense, right? If you have more money in the bank, you'll be pulling a little bit more out. If you have less money in the bank, you'll be pulling a little less out. And so that makes sense. That's how your body kind of uses these eggs over time. It will pull more out when you're younger, when there are more to choose from, and less out each cycle when there are a little less to choose from. Now, when you have a low AMH number, that does not mean you have five eggs left total. You could have hundreds left, you could have thousands left. You have no idea how many are actually truly left in your bank, in your egg bank. So AMH is literally just a number that is measuring the amount of AMH in your blood that's related to the amount of follicles that are developing during that cycle. It is not an accurate predictor of your ability to get pregnant or your potential of getting pregnant. I have seen women with very, very, very low AMH numbers of like 0.1 or even lower go on to have happy, healthy, natural pregnancies. I've also seen them go on to have happy, healthy pregnancies that they achieve from IVF cycles. AMH is not a predictor of whether or not you can get pregnant or whether or not you are fertile. This is an important point. How many eggs do you ovulate each cycle? You only ovulate one egg. Whether you have normal AMH or low normal or low or very low AMH numbers, if you are ovulating an egg at any point during the cycle, all of you are only ovulating one single egg. 
So your chances for pregnancy are the exact same. So AMH numbers does not predict whether or not you can get pregnant. It's really just a measure of how many follicles are developing during that one cycle. So now you might be thinking, but I went to my doctor and they saw my AMH is super low and they freaked me out because they told me I can't get pregnant and I must do IVF. And here's the deal with AMH. AMH is actually a very useful data point and that's what I like to call it with my ladies. It's a data point. It gives us information, and the more information that we have to work with, the better we're able to make decisions that we feel good about. So AMH is used a lot in predicting the success rate of an IVF cycle. The higher your AMH is, the more eggs you're able to pull from each cycle, the more eggs you get, the more embryos you get, and the more embryos you get, the more chance that you have of a successful IVF cycle. So if you're already starting with a very, very low threshold for being able to pull any eggs off a cycle, then your success rate for your IVF goes down. Now the success rate for IVF is not huge to begin with, but the higher your AMH is, the more chance of having more eggs during each retrieval that you do, meaning the more embryos that you have to work with. It again is not a measure of your fertility. It is not a measure of whether or not that you can get pregnant. So you can have a very, very low AMH and still be able to get pregnant naturally and you can also have a very low AMH and still get pregnant via IVF because not only is it not a predictor of whether or not you can get pregnant, it is also not a measure of your egg quality. So you may have less eggs to pull from each month, but the quality overall is not measured by AMH. And so your doctor may be kind of giving you a little bit of a, hey, you know, your AMH is low, you kind of need to think about it, IVF. And that's not because they don't think you can get pregnant, it's because the statistics for IVF success rate goes down the further your AMH goes down. Again, does not mean you can't get pregnant naturally, and it does not mean that you can't get pregnant on an IVF cycle. All it means is that there is just less money in the bank, there are less eggs in the bank to pull from each month. Hit me down below in the comments, ladies. I really wanna see what are the, some things that your doctors are saying to you when you get your AMH results. Are they telling you it's a predictor of whether or not you can get pregnant? Are they kind of pushing you towards IVF? What's happening at your office appointments with your doctors when you're getting your AMH results? I really wanna know. So here's why AMH can be useful. It can be useful in helping you to decide if you are thinking about IVF or you're thinking about freezing your eggs it may help you in determining whether or not that's the right move for you now and whether you have time to really kind of wait on that. Now, if you're in a position where you never had your AMH tested until you tested it and it came back low, that's okay, all right? It's really not a measure of whether or not you can get pregnant. What we're gonna worry about now is the quality of the eggs that are released each month, and that increases your chances of having really good grade embryos when you do get to an IVF cycle, and it also increases your chances of having really good egg quality when you go for a natural pregnancy as well. So regardless of what your data point, regardless of what your AMH says, we're still gonna be concentrating on overall health and egg quality so that when we do get to that point, whether you're freezing your eggs, IVF cycle, going naturally, no matter which way you're going about it, quality is the thing that really matters in the end. Now, in terms of egg quality, that is absolutely something that you can improve. You have a lot that you can do to improve your egg quality no matter what you've been told before, I definitely recommend getting on to my next masterclass where I go over the scientific breakthroughs that have been made in the area of improving egg quality. It's some pretty cool stuff and things you can do right at home. Now your doctor might also be telling you you can't change your AMH. Your AMH is your AMH and that's it, you're done. <laughs> and in one sense, they're kind of right. You can't change the amount of eggs that you have. You are born with the amount of eggs you have and there's nothing else that we can do about that. We can't grow new eggs. The thing that they're not correct about though is that there is variability in how many eggs are released each month. It's not like your ovaries are like, okay, all right, ladies, we're on lockdown. We have a low AMH, we have a low ovarian reserve. We are only gonna release two eggs for possible ovulation every single month from now on. It doesn't work like that. So as you age, the amount of eggs that are coming out of the bank goes down and down and down and down but it's variable. So some might, some months you might have seven, some might be four, then nine, then five. It goes up and down and up and down. It's never stable. So there will be some months that your AMH is higher and some months that your AMH is a little lower. 
it can also be variable throughout your cycle, okay? You might imagine that during the beginning part of your follicular phase, your AMH will be higher because that's when all of your follicles are maturing, rather than the end part of your follicular phase when you're only having one follicle, one dominant follicle that's still maturing, or in your luteal phase when obviously no follicles are maturing, so your AMH is gonna be even lower at that point. So not only will it be variable throughout each cycle, but it will also be variable within that one cycle. So you can get it tested in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, and you'll get three completely separate numbers. And again, none of them are related to the actual probability of you getting pregnant because each month you're still ovulating one egg. You have the same chance of conceiving that anybody else with any other AMH number has. So you might be really worried about your AMH levels if they're in the low category, but it's just a data point. Yet the number does not actually define your fertility. It does not tell us your chances of conceiving. It doesn't even tell you about the quality of your egg. So what you need to concentrate on right now, even regardless of the AMH number, what we need to concentrate on is good quality eggs, making sure that you're really, really healthy. We're dealing with any root cause issues that are happening, inflammation, thyroid issues, anything that's going on in your body, we need to address those things so that we can get the best quality egg possible for each cycle going forward. So that's what I want you to concentrate on every single time I have a conversation with a lady who's like, oh my God, my AMH is 0.13 or 0.32. I'm like, okay, here's the spiel. It's a data point. It does not define you. It does not mean you can't get pregnant. All of these things that we've talked about here on this video already. And there are studies that show this as well. They've compared women with normal AMH numbers to women with low AMH numbers, and the live birth rate is not different whatsoever. The pregnancy chances each cycle is not different whatsoever. So say it with me, the AMH is not a measure of your pregnancy chances or your fertility overall. It's just a number that's related to how many follicles are developing in that particular cycle. All right, I hope that helped you in shedding a little bit more light on what your AMH means and that it's just a data point. It does not mark your fertility in any sort of way. It's really just to help inform you on what you want to do next. Are you deciding to move into, into IVF a little bit sooner than you might have before? Are you deciding to freeze eggs before you thought you might have before? Are you deciding that, you know, it's fine, I'm just gonna continue on with this plan and focus on good egg quality? Because again, the chances of pregnancy each month are the same as if your AMH was in the normal range. All right, ladies, that's it for me on this video. I will see you on the next one. Make sure you're subscribed below and you're on my email list to get your hands on that super awesome Black Friday special I have coming out any minute now. All right, ladies, see you later. Bye.